Um, you know, the, the milestones that we're seeing, we actually have on everydayastronaut.com, we have a milestone checklist of like all the things we're hoping to see that we kind of need to see before the first orbital flight of this rocket. So um, a big milestone that got checked off yesterday was uh, a wet dress rehearsal. So it's literally like fueling the rocket up, getting ready to do everything but lighting the engines, basically. So we're talking about loading it with propellant all the way. Uh, and this is the first time, yep, right there. Where's the milestones? Right there at the top. Click that big picture. Yep, just anywhere. That big picture, yep. <laughs> so the, there's the wet dress rehearsal. So what, yep. what's the wet dress rehearsal? Yep, so that's where they, uh, for the first time, they filled it completely to the brim with both liquid oxygen and liquid methane. Now they had done component level testing where they fill it with liquid nitrogen, which is, you know, it's an inert gas. So it's not like, say it leaks out, it's not gonna explode. Uh, you could just have a big giant pool of liquid nitrogen like flooding the area, but it's not gonna be an explosion. So they've done that for cryo testing to make sure all the components and stuff can handle, you know, being at cryogenic temperatures. Um, it's kind of a good analog before you start putting your, your fuel and your oxidizer in there. But now as of uh, yesterday, they fully fueled the rocket with uh, propellant, both stages, the first stage and the second stage, while fully stacked on the on the pad. Like, basically, I mean, it was the first sense we really got of, like, this is what it's going to look like right before it takes off. You know, kind of breathing, coming to life for the first time. What does the pad look like? So there's a few interesting aspects to this. What's up with the chopsticks and the, uh, <laughs> all of that? Yeah, so the the launch pad is, is, is unique. I've never seen anything like it. Um, and the prior history of, of space flight, but it's a really simple launch stand. They basically have like this, it almost looks like a, a stool, like a, you know, like a milking a cow stool thing with a, a whole, a big giant. Now train. I know you're from Iowa, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we all know what that stool oh, looks yeah. like. Oh we yeah, all, we all been sitting on that stool milking cow. Yeah. Uh, there, with, a, that. <laughs> with a giant hole in the middle and that hole in the middle of that stool is where the rocket sits and it sits on these, you know, launch clamps. Um, and then next to it is the, so that's the orbital launch mount. And then next to it, or the OLM, some people will say, next to it is the orbital launch tower, the OLT. And that is not only um, integral to fueling up the upper stage, you know, the upper stage has to have propellant lines run to it mm -hmm. so that they can fill it with propellant and, you know, all that. But it also, uh, they ended up making it so instead of having a big crane on site to stack the two on top of each other, they literally just used that tower as a crane. So the crane has these giant arms lovingly called the chopsticks or the whole system can be called Mechazilla. Mm -hmm. And that will grab onto, first it'll grab onto the booster, pick it up off of its off of its transporter that transports it from the production site, uh, lifts it up, puts it down onto the launch mount, and then it will pick up the second stage or the upper stage Starship and plop it down on top of the booster. And they did that for the first time last year. Actually, I think it was like Valentine's last year. It was the first time they used the chopsticks to stack it. And now they're doing it quite frequently, you know. But ultimately, those chopsticks have to serve a second purpose. They're actually going to utilize, if you say catch, the, it's not so much they're going to catch the booster with these chopsticks. It's not like it's, you know, a dad trying to catch a falling child, you know. It's more that the the booster and the Starship will someday land on those arms. Yeah. So um, they're more or less stationary. I'm sure there's some bit of, you know, adjustment that the arms will do, but more or less the rocket's going to propulsively land and get picked up by like, what's essentially like two, like relatively small ball joints mm -hmm. that hold the entire thing. And so it has to land very precisely on these, these mounts and then on, onto the, the launch mount. And then that's, what's going to just place it back onto the stand and allow it to be refueled and fly what's, again. What's the idea of using the arms versus having a launch pad to land on? What's, what's the benefit? You are basically removing the mass of what would be heavy landing legs, and you're putting kind of that landing infrastructure onto a ground system. So you're not having to carry those landing legs into orbit. But is, it's also elevated off the ground. Is there some aspect to that where you don't have to balance the thrust and all the... You, you, you can negate some of those, like, there's like plume-plume interactions. There's like, you know, the exhaust hitting concrete, and especially with a rocket this big, it's going to, you know, use like three Raptor engines firing. If you know if you have them firing really close to the ground, you're just gonna absolutely destroy and crater the ground and you're gonna have to refurbish the, the ground and the, the landing pad every time. And, you know, or have huge landing legs that are super long and, and tall, you know, to, to make it so it's, it's elevated enough to not do that. Um, so yeah, you're kind of, you're avoiding that whole mess by, by catching it high enough off the ground that you don't have to 
factor that in. And it's that's how many engines are involved in the landing part is the three Raptor engines? Well, we haven't actually, you know, we haven't to date seen the exact landing sequence. So it might be something like at first they might light up, you know, seven or something or nine or something, some number to to accelerate quickly or decelerate quickly, same thing. Um, and and then shut it down to three or something for a little bit more granular control. Because mm. um, unlike Falcon 9, Starship has enough engines and variability to actually, if it needed to hover, you know, to maybe more precisely align itself with the pad, mm -hmm. it would have that capability. Um, and especially having multiple engines, you know, if you only have a single engine running, you can't really roll. You know, your roll axis, you can do pitch and yaw because the the engine is kind of like a, a rudder. It, it, it can move in two axes. So you can easily pitch and yaw the vehicle. But to actually induce roll along its its vertical axis, you you would either need like auxiliary engines to roll it, or you'd need a pair of engines so they can be opposed and induce roll. So by having two or three running, they have all three axes of control that they would need, kind of like a broomstick, you know, and uh, balancing a broomstick on your hand. They can just move it over, and if they need to align it to those landing nubs, you know, on the landing arms and stuff like that, then uh, they can do that. 